Welcome to another amazing edition of Club Expressions Online. This is the Nairobi Chapel Teens and Youth Service. My good name is DJ Slim Sufficient. I serve as one of the pastors here at Nairobi Chapel. I'm so excited to have an opportunity to just welcome you to another amazing service. It's been a minute. I've missed you guys. I hope you guys are keeping safe. I hope you guys are maintaining social distance and as well, you're sanitizing. All right. You need to keep safe in this season and in this time. So today we have an amazing worship team that is ready just to usher us in the presence of God. But before we do that, guys, we just jumped into a new series. It's called the Love Series. And to kick us off, we had the one and only pastor, Reverend Ken Aringo, our own youth pastor here at Nairobi Chapel Ngong Road. And he just spoke to us about a father's love. And it was amazing to just see him in his house, enjoying with his family, and the son just playing the keyboard and an amazing worship set. As that was happening, we got to learn about what it means to have a father love on his son and to have the son love the father back. And we enjoyed that relationship. But as we get into this new week, we are going to learn something different. Our topic this week is about favoritism. And you know what, guys? What happens when a father's love goes wrong? So this week we have a father and a son sharing with us an amazing story of their life. You guys need to tune in, listen to this story, because it's something inspirational and something that we can definitely learn. But before we do that... Who is more likely to get married first? Who is the most likely to spend their money on something ridiculous? Who is more dramatic? Who likes reading the Bible more? Who is more stubborn? Who is more emotional? Who is the funniest? Who has better style? Who likes praying more? Who is the tidiest? Who helps around the home more? Who is the easygoing one? Who is the funniest? Who apologizes first after a disagreement? Who is more thoughtful? Who prays more? Who is more patient? Who is a better cook? Who reads the Bible more? Who is more social? Who has better style? Who is more likely to give you money when you ask? Who is the better driver? Allow me to just to usher you guys into a time of worship. We have our very own Kuhani worship team. These guys are talented, they are gifted, but most importantly, they are saved and they love the Lord. So they are young, they are fly, but definitely they are saved and they enjoy being in the presence of God. So guys, welcome to worship and enjoy this time together. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another service of Club Expressions. We're going to have an amazing time in the house of the Lord. Yes? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Amen. So this song is called Alive. Wherever you are, just stand up because you're about to have an amazing time. 
Let's go. Say, if you love him, don't so praise him. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your, put your hands up. Say, if you love him, don't stop praising. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your, put your hands up. One more time. Let's go. Say, if you love him, don't so praise him. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your, put your hands up. Say, if you love him, don't stop praising. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your, put your hands up. Say I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I am born again. Forever free in the Savior's hands. You are more than my words can say. I'll follow you, Lord, for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your ways. Forever free in an end of grace. Cause you are, you are, you are, you are my freedom. You higher, we lift you higher, higher, you higher, lift you higher. Yeah. Your love, your love, your love never fails. Oh, 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 you are life in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. One more time, one more time. Oh, oh, us any help we need emotionally, spiritually, physically anything we need all we need to do is invite him into this place and this is how we do it sing with us
kuina mia Tuna kuina mia wewe Tuna kuina mia Tuna kuina mia wewe Tuna kuina mia
Oh, it's uh, so good to be here at Nairobi Chapel Club, Club Expressions, and uh, I'm so excited uh, to be sharing with you guys today. My name is Thomas Obunde. Uh, you can call me Toma. And uh, here I am with uh, my son, Matthew. Matthew, tell us who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I call the XP. You guys know me. My name is Matthew Bunde. Um, I serve as a small groups leader. Uh, and when I'm not doing that, I'm at school studying film, um, working on music production. But yeah, Dad, why don't you lead us into a word of prayer and we'll get the sermon started. Well, let's, let's just pray and then just ask uh, the Lord to take this time and use it as we commit ourselves to him. Father, we want to thank you so much for your goodness towards us. Uh, we thank you for a week that you watched over us. We thank you that you've allowed us another opportunity uh, to be here virtual, to be watching this, and also to just hear from you what you have to say to us uh, from your word. And so we do commit ourselves today. We pray for calm hearts. We pray that regardless of what's going on around us today, uh, with the pandemic of this COVID, we'd ask that you'd allow us to know that you're still our sovereign, that you are still in control, that you're watching over your people. So we commit your word that we're about to hear. We would ask that you'd soften our hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Matthew, why don't you read for us the text then for today as we are looking at this uh, topic. What's the topic again? Favoritism. Father's love goes wrong. Father's love goes yeah, wrong. Yeah, it's like a headline. That's, a headline. <laughs> That's f- breaking news. Breaking news. Okay. Um, you're going to be reading for, uh, from Genesis Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 11. If you have your Bibles, grab them and open up your books to Genesis 37, verses 1 through 11. I'll start at verse 1. Now, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his uh, sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he had made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheave rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told to his brothers, Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now we're going to jump over to James chapter 2 verse 1. And this passage is really going to help us focus on what we're really talking about today, which is favoritism. Yeah. So in James chapter 2, verse 1, it reads, My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. Now, what's interesting here is this passage, um, the King James translation takes the word partiality and changes it to respect of peoples. Um, And now what the Apostle James is writing here to the church is really the church members respecting some people over others. Impartiality, to be able to understand it more, we're going to dive into some definitions to get a better grasp of it. In the Webster Dictionary, uh, partiality is defined as being biased to one party. Um, A second definition talks about it being um, favoring something without reason. And the third is affecting a part only, not general, not universal, just specifically a, a part, implying that there's division or separation from a whole. And so just even getting a bigger and better grasp at what partiality is in this particular um, text, we have uh, James 2 in other versions of, of Scripture, and that's a really good tool to use to be able to see how a word is used and why it's used that way. 
And so in the ISV version, we're going to look at the same text, James 2 verse 1. And we see that it says, My brothers, do not practice your faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ by showing partiality. In NIV, it says, My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. And in Good News Translation, it says, My friends, as believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, you must never treat people in different ways according to their outward appearance. Now, this term partiality has been variously used. We've seen favoritism, we've seen respect of persons, the servile regard and snobbery. And in the Vine's expository dictionary of New Testament words, it expands the meaning. And I'm just going to read it here. It says, It is the fault of one who, when responsible to give judgment, has respect to the position, rank, popularity, or circumstances of men, instead of their intrinsic conditions, preferring the rich and powerful to those who are not so. Armed with this understanding, we can clearly see how uh, partiality is explored daily. Um, and we can see that through uh, the economy. We can see that through uh, business. We can see it at home. For example, at home, parents would prefer um, to be prejudiced or really partial to their own child rather than another parent's child. And I mean, that's natural, right? It becomes a problem when a parent is partial to one specific child and not all of their children, though. There's room for disaster in that. Um, but let's go, let's go broad now. Here at XP, we have people being partial to brands of clothing, um, brands of appliances, brands of cars, even down to brands of soap. Guys, brands of soap. And let's make it more relational, right? We have the folks that like LeBron James. We have the folks that like Stephen Curry. Hmm? We have the guys that like Nike. We have the guys that like Adidas. And at the end of the day, these are usually just personal opinions due to habit, experience, advertising, and personal recommendation, right? But of course, even in today's uh, times, there are prejudices and um, people holding opinions towards different things that affect us. Um, we have the folks that right now were struggling with the idea of race. And in society here in Kenya, we have the struggle of classism. Um, in the church, there's a struggle of religion. And in our country, there's a struggle of politics. How we choose to go about reacting um, and responding to these views and how we display the way we feel about them really matters, even in a supposedly free society and equal society. Yeah. And Matthew, it's true. Um, there are many, many biblical examples of uh, people who showed partiality. And today, as our attention is going to turn to Jacob, as a matter of fact, I grew up in a home where my father showed partiality. He married four wives. He had over 20-some kids. And we knew which wife was favored. We knew which children were favored. And uh, at times, it uh, created a lot of tension. And I can identify very clearly with how Jacob's family looked like. Jacob showed partiality to Rachel. Uh, and his source to showing that partiality was one which brought hostility, uh, brought instability, uh, the skimmings from Jacob's other sons, because he also actually allowed it to affect his reaction to how he loved Joseph more than he loved his other sons. And Matthew, you know that um, when you think about this story, it's a famous story. Um, people have read about Jacob and Joseph. People know how... Uh, this fascinating, it's, it's rich with its own important lessons. And we want to look at uh, a couple of things and just uh, draw some, some lessons out of it. Uh, in, in Genesis 37, where you read uh, for us, uh, Joseph is 17 years old. He's taking care of a uh, ship with his older brothers. But well, we read this in verse 3 of the passage that Matthew read for us. Now Israel, who's Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Uh, when you think about that, uh, here is the first reaction 
we want to examine Jacob's reaction to Joseph. It's a reaction showing partiality on Jacob's part. And that didn't go very well. Uh, I can imagine uh, Jacob being one of those gold men who is proud to be daunting his affection and sentiments towards his young man. Uh, I can imagine him being reminded uh, of his youth. But at the same time, as he's doing this, he's not hiding it. He's showing it in open. Um, everyone can see that this I love more than that. And I ask myself, Ati, do you think that you saw any of this with us, your parents, as you were growing up? You were born with two other siblings. You have Vanessa and you have Simon. Did, did, you, did, our, did your parents show partiality towards uh, any of the kids? All right. One from memory that um, often comes to mind is when Vanessa was turning 13. And now the teen years was one of the things that were, it was a huge thing in our family. It was a huge thing. Um, and so Vanessa turning 13, um, this teenage year, the first in the family, it was one of those things that I'd like to think you guys thought was ceremonial. It needed to be, um, it needed to be something big. And so with that, you, brought, um, you got her a gift that was something that Simon and I really wanted at this age. And um, it was a little flip phone, a little Motorola. When you flip it open, it had the whole hello Motorola ringtone. I don't even remember it. Yeah, the ones but, which had a light on them. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, so this phone was just, it was something that uh, we would have liked to have. And so I, in that type of situation, um, I feel like if it happened often, then it would have been a case where uh, we felt like you would have been showing partiality towards Vanessa. At this point, were you guys feeling like uh, we were like uh, treating her more special than we were treating you guys? I mean, yeah, in the moment, just being childish the way that we were, it would have it would have felt like, oh, mom and dad loves Vanessa more than they love us. We've been begging for phones all this time, and they only give Vanessa one. So you could you could imagine that it was something like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, when you when you look at this particular text, I don't think mom and dad were that bad. No. Um, <laughs> here, we find or we see an undiluted partiality. Hmm. In, in fact, this special place Jacob accorded Joseph is the beginning of a very sad story. Such parental partiality and favoritism always is foolish and evil. How many family circles have been disrupted because of this common ill? Many, many kids, many individuals' lives have been marred because they grew up in homes, they grew up in atmospheres where all they knew was partiality. And Jacob... I think was at this point not wise in showing partiality to, towards Joseph. He did not try to hide it. He made a, this boy a coat of many colors, long-sleeved coat of many colors. At this point when he's doing this and he's giving Joseph this in front of his brothers, you know one of the things that's happening? He's almost saying, I am acknowledging you as also being ahead of your brothers. Uh, and they didn't take that well. They didn't take that well. And we begin to see that the brothers of Joseph start plotting against him. They start plotting. And we'll see that. But the second place we see this also, and Matthew talked about it a little bit, was how about the church and partiality? How about when we see people in the church showing partiality? I think it's seen when we are approached by the same evil in the church. Matthew talked about in places like uh, uh, XP. You guys have... Uh, uh, the brands. Brands that you like, <laughs> the people who like more brands. That, but let me, let me bring a little bit closer to home. Mm. Are there times that you think that uh, even amongst the young people at church, mm. if kids maybe are coming from a place like Kibra or they're coming from a place like the Goreti, that if they came and be who are amongst you guys, that if we're not careful, there's a tendency that we want to stay with our clique. Mm. Yeah. Is, are, there, are there moments like that that you think uh, would be reflections of what the scripture is talking about here? Yeah. Uh, when we're looking at Jacob, yes, and Joseph's um, 
uh, reaction, Jacob's reaction towards Joseph and his love towards him more than the others. Mm. Are there times when believers in the midst of the context of where we are at here, that that would happen? Could, can you tell me if, if that's the case for you? Yeah, um, there's always the the separation that can be involved where um, kids that are able to come just the way that they're dressed, whether that's very well or not so as flashy or um, in fashion, um, it can create a divide where you have the kids that wear the, the on-brand um, attire mixed together, whereas the kids that wear the off-brand stuff don't. Um, yeah, so you could you can definitely see that type of partiality, and um, it's definitely not something that uh, we are rebuking and saying that you're a sinner for doing that. But in the same way, we need to understand that it is human nature um, that we have sin, and so James asking the church not to show partiality and not to show favoritism according to um, the people that have. Um, different appearances, not to show it in that regard, is for the sense of fellowship. He's asking for that, to be fellowshipping with one another, um, holy, not as a part, and not separating, and not being divided. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of the things that I noted uh, concerning how people show partiality is, think about how in business someone is preferred because he butters up the boss or shines his shoes, mm. or a person is promoted but not for his business uh, knowledge. He, he's, he's done so because he is one of those who uh, knows someone who knows someone. Uh, and so for that reason, <laughs> we'll give you an opportunity. Yeah, to, you got the connections. You got the connections, <laughs> right? Okay, or someone else is elected into a church office because of uh, his family connections. Yeah. You know? uh, there are many, many churches across our land that uh, are controlled by family cliques. And here is where our persons are honored because of their relatives. Mm -hmm. But I'd like us to read, and if you can read for me from in James, um, what is James saying about this, especially when it affects us as believers? What, what does he say? Can you just read that portion of scripture that we have there uh, and, and what James is, is talking to us about it? All right. So again, James chapter 2, verses 1. It says, My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, You sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, You stand over there, or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convi convicted by the law as transgressors. So you see, the Bible is actually very clear that if you show partiality, you are committing sin. Yeah, those are very strong words. Those are, those are, those are God's words. <laughs> those are God's words, yeah. Yes. And he's saying, <laughs> if you show partiality, and Jacob actually was sinning in not treating his sons all equally in regards to his love towards them. And doing so in the presence of the whole world, so to speak, to see. Partiality, of course, does have its deadliest work in the home. And this is a third point that I'd like us to see. Especially where there are family relations. Partiality destroys uh, a child from another child. It's always one of those things a parent should never do in showing partiality to one child over the other. As a matter of fact, Matthew, where was the first, uh, where was the first, uh, if I can call it, uh, um, scene? Uh, where, where did the first scene take place? Do you know? God, Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Yeah. What was going on in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. <laughs> what happened with Adam and Eve? Um, God instructed Adam not to eat of the... Uh, not to eat the fruit that grew on the tree of good and evil. Mm -hmm. um, and Eve comes along not knowing of this commandment, um, but out of her freedom chooses to eat of the fruit. Yep. And now that's not where the sin takes place. Mm -hmm. Where the sin takes place is where Adam decides that because Eve is telling me that this fruit is good to eat, 
I will eat it regardless of what God has told me. Mm -hmm. And we see that sin actually has its very foundation right in that first home. Mm. Right in that first home. We should be very careful what things we do right in our home that mess up the whole generation of our children. At the end of the day, we have to be careful because if our kids are messed up from home, there's no way that we are going to think that will come out being the confident kids we want them to be, the kids that love the rest of society that we want them to be. Because if a, father, if a child looks at a father and says, my father was a very hateful person. He hated me. He didn't love me. And I know that some kids at home today, you may have been brought up in a home where partiality was shown. And uh, you may have been brought up in a home where you, you very much you know that your father really didn't love you or mother didn't really love you or your father left and went and showed partiality in loving another home that is no longer with you at home. But I'd like to remind you that uh, we have a father. We have a heavenly father and he does not show partiality. We're going to talk about how he loves us unconditionally, how he cares for us unconditionally. The story is told of a young girl who shared in, in tears how she was raised in a home uh, where favoritism and partiality was shown. Uh, people talked about her sisters. Uh, her sister was be, be good looking. Her sister had long hair. Her sister was good at uh, doing her schooling. Her sister always attracted all the guests that came home, talked, uh, talked to her and talked about her. But nobody really looked at her. Nobody really paid attention to her. So in trying to seek attention, she went and did all sorts of things, she says. I went and uh, did all sorts of evil, and uh, I even uh, made boys love me so I can find the attention. I sinned all sorts of sins. And when we think about that, that's such an awful, awful thing that would have happened to her. But when you, as a person, ask yourself, how did she get there? We know that she was responsible for her own decisions, yes. But the others around her that played a part. And I know that some of us here may be uh, going through the same. I want to share a couple of consequences of showing partiality. In Joseph's case, his brothers reacted in hostility towards him. They actually plotted murder. Imagine your brothers plotting your murder. Of the third degree. Oh, is that the third degree? The third degree, I'm yeah, not they a lawyer, discuss it, yeah? I, I, I cannot know. tell you how many degrees are there to murdering someone. But can you imagine mm. your brothers from the same father wanting to kill you mm. because your father has shown more love to you? That love has gone wrong. Yeah, It's gone yeah. terribly wrong. And I would say that even though their reaction was one of bitterness and anger, if I may point out here and say, if you're going through the scene, the response should never be retaliation towards a person who's shown love or the person who's shown favoritism. It doesn't make it right for you to sit back and say, well, they, he deserves what he's getting because he's made me feel the way I'm feeling. And that was Joseph's brother's, so to speak, statements. I think they were thinking he brought this upon himself. Now remember, it's not Joseph who loved himself more. It's Joseph's father who loved Joseph more than he loved his brothers. And in that, in that sense, we understand that the consequences ended up being Joseph suffering. They wanted to kill him, but they didn't. They instead had pity on him somehow. They reasoned together, and they decided to sell him, and they sold him out in, into Egypt as a slave. And we have to be very, very careful that in the same way, we are not allowing ourselves to get to that point where we are that bitter. I want to talk about the Father's love. But before I do, Matthew, what are some of the lessons you can pick out for yourself from this? Hmm. I think one thing is um, just seeing how Jacob didn't learn the lesson. Um, he spent time battling favoritism. Mm -hmm. I mean, with um, his brother Esau and his dad, you had shared about how uh, he had had the history of um, being his mother's favorite. But he wanted to, to, to still have the, the dawning of his dad. And so he goes behind his dad's back and he steals his brother's birthright. And then again, uh, he goes and he, was it Laban? He works for Laban. For his wife. Mm -hmm. He works for his wife. And that was a whole other story of favoritism where he preferred Rachel over Leah. Mm -hmm. 
And now he's come to this point where um, favoritism is destroying the family. And um, it's clear here that the parent played a very key role in fueling the fire that was the sibling rivalry. And um, this story is another good example of how it takes two to have a rivalry. But even though the brothers were not very nice to Joseph and they blamed their father, Joseph as well didn't have any part in, in trying to solve the issues and, and come up with a better plan. Um, he was a taunter, he was a tattler, and both sides were, were, were wrong in not taking the right steps to, to, to reconcile. But it's beautiful because in the end they do reconcile. They do reconcile. They do reconcile. And that's the beauty. One of the beauties about reconciliation is that it brings people together. Mm. Uh, one of the things I'd like to share with you about um, in just learning from this, and especially if you're watching from home, uh, and you've been bitter, you've been angry, you've been raged over favoritism and partiality, uh, I'd like to share with you God's love. God's love in relating to his family, in relating to his children. God doesn't show partiality over any one of his children. He loves us all. And he actually loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to come and die in our place at the cross. And he was buried and he rose again from the dead so that you and I can know what it means to have a relationship with God. And so the first thing is let the gospel have its deep effect on you. Let the love of God have its deep effect on you. Let him allow him to bring you out from the dead and give you life and save you, and restore in you a heart of love, a heart of forgiveness, and restore in you a, a heart that wants to be able to reach out and be a reconciler to even others who have not been reconciled with him. So that's the first thing that I'd like to share with you. And so come to him knowing you're a sinner, and you're a sinner that needs God's grace. That, that just like Jacob, just like Joseph, just like Joseph's brothers and, uh, and their evil, evil uh, plans, you too, has been one who has shown partiality in your hatred for God, in loving this world. And God has turned around and still loved you and I and stretched his hand out to actually save you from your sin so that he can receive you to be one of his. But the second one also would be this, that you'd labor towards knowing that now that God has brought you to his kingdom, that he wants to be one that actually shares that love with others. Shares that with others who do not deserve supposedly to be loved because sometimes we look for people who we think deserve to be loved, those who we think who deserve our love. But God is saying, no, 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 no. Reach out to those who will never do anything back for you and show them the goodness of the love of God in their lives. Allow yourself to be an instrument that God can use as a ministry in the life of someone else. And today, as we think through and as we wrap up this, I'd like to ask you this question. Have you known his love? And can you allow his love to turn around your broken heart and mend it and allow you to be his son, his daughter this day? I'd like to pray with us. I'd like to ask you to just, wherever it is that you are, uh, in the silence of your heart, in the silence of your home, in the comfort of where you are seated, uh, whether you're watching in a bus or you're watching in a taxi or you're just seated in a park somewhere, could you just bow your head and say to him, you alone can save me. You alone can bring life back to me. I'm dead in my trespass and sin and I want you to save me this day. Is that you? And you've reached out. I believe right down there there's a number that you can call and just say, can you pray with me? Can you help me? I want to have this relationship with a Savior. I want to be reconciled back to God. And God will do that for you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us today, with Matthew and I. We love just sharing God's word with you. May God bless you. Wow, guys, that was such an amazing service. I've personally actually been challenged just having to listen to today's topic and today's message. My key take home for this week is simple. God is our restorer. He's the one who can restore us. So I hope you guys get that and you actually allow God to use you. Tune in next week. Same time, same place. God bless.